evening, a warm welcome to you all. Thanks for joining me tonight. We're going to go on a nice journey talking about some trends that should leave <laughs> out the door and some trends that's like, come on, come on in. So we're going to just talk about um, what's happening in the world of fashion. One thing I know is that when I was younger, a long time ago, it was so important to be on trend. There was an obsession to be wearing like the trendy look. And I would say maybe since COVID, it's been more about comfort, um, comfort and comfort and de-stressing people and uh, just keeping life a lot more simple. And of course, before COVID, being very individual in your style. So whether you're bohemian, rock and roll, glam, punk, you know, it all was cool as long as you could wear it, right? And so tonight we're going to take a dive into practicality because I could show you something really sort of strange and bizarre and say, hello folks, this is the new trend. And it's like, yeah, Viv, but only one person in the world would wear it and could wear it. So I'm, I'm trying to be practical as well as I dive into it. So let's look at what we've got in store for tonight. So the first thing I want to share with you is that we're going to look at fashion by age. And I've got a haircut to show you. And the haircut I'm going to show you, I have never done before. Um, I already have cut some of it, which took some time because I had to do so much thinking. And I went through, I love it. I don't like it at all. I love it. I don't like it at all. So, you know, there's a lot of that going on. But anyway, I just want to show you that. But let's just do a little kind of look at fashions and trends. So what I did was I did some Google searches and I did some searching through YouTube and I looked at what are the hot things that people are searching for, right? What are people searching for? And so, of course, is it any surprise that one of the things that people are still loving is, of course, the bob. So whether it be a short little French style bob, the bob has a real high search functionality. So, so when we're looking at the bob, you can see here, this is a bob that has, um, is sitting in at the cheekbone. It has layers within it, it has wave within it, and it just has a, a long, heavy fringe. So the bob, in however you're going to style it and finish it, has to have that fresh sort of look to it. So the bob, Keep it on your list, it's important. Now the next thing that's searched a, a lot for is the pixie. So what we're talking about, we're talking about classic hairstyles that have a fashion sensibility and then they drift out. So a pixie that's a little bit longer, a pixie that's more glam, a pixie that's a little bit rooted, a pixie that has some carving going on. So you could do a pixie with a root perm, how fantastic. You could do a pixie with a weave perm, amazing. You could do a pixie by sliding and freehand channeling into the hair to create highs and lows. So again, what's important is thinking a little different about a pixie haircut. But again, in looking at what are people looking for, the pixie was very, very high. The next thing that comes across, which is again, very important, is long hair. Now, what was really interesting is that the search for short hair was higher than the search for long hair. So the lovely beach curl, which I do enjoy, it's time for it to go on its very fair way. Now we've done beach curls with straight ends, curly ends, mid shaft, uh, all sorts of variations, and I love every single one of them. But what I'm gonna encourage you to do tonight is think about using some different tools and think about some of your ladies that have been having that beach curl effect, could you now do that voluminous blow dry or a roller set and just get that fabulous bouffant kind of um, bombshell blow dry kind of effect? So that would be another consideration. Curl. Curl is really, really important um, as we move into this year. The perming technology is amazing. If any of you are members of Viv Unplugged, which is on my website, you will see Curl Cult. Curl Cult's amazing. It's a very new technology in perming. You can do pink hole perms, finger wave perms, um, bendy perms. You can put so many different tools into the hair because of the science of the perm itself. So this here, just an amazing moppy effect. Um, and the curl, I think, is really gorgeous. The other thing, too, that you're going to see is the return to more glamour. 
So how can we glam up our looks? So we start to shift away from that raw, lived-in look and we start to go into more glamorous. That has relaxation. And I think that's a very important part of the journey. So let's look at some of the things that have been going on on our social media world. So a lot of guys <laughs> buzzing off that underneath and just had a nice little pompadour of curls on the top. Uh, clearly, you know, really a cool look, a little nod to the 80s. So what I always say, guys, is that if you wore it the first time, probably shouldn't wear it the second time, right? So, um, no, I did not wear this the first time. No, I, I wore a poodle hairstyle, which was really attractive. I also had a perm that was a hedge, which was equally attractive. And then I had a very nasty curly shag hairstyle, which was bi-level, which was equally as unattractive. Uh, and I wondered why I couldn't get a date. But anyway, yes, I grew up in the 80s and wore some really scary perms. But I do like the sensibility of some of these textures here in terms of the, the wonderful curl and the movement. So again, start thinking about your perming and start thinking about where you can go with that particular look. The next thing I want to talk to you about are the skinny bobs. So skinny bobs. Uh, the tucking behind the ear so that there's softness in the front and everything is skinnied down. So this is a, a haircut that has graduation into layers and it is completely razor cut and it gives you that nice skinny effect. So it's skinning it down, which I think is very, very important. Another classic graduation, skinny down again, just really deconstructing, which again, I think is really very cool. The next thing I, I want you to consider, round shapes. Now, there's a way to wear round. <laughs> and tonight I'm going to show you something that is based on round and by level. So this is not your typical, um, let me just show you by, by giving you an example. I'm going to just come and bring my little mannequin in here for a moment. So we did her, this little lady in one of the classes. And she's obviously, um, she's completely razor cut and she has a nice soft movement. And what I did, I thought, right, how do we start to make even something like this different? So I just put a headband in to make it lighter around the face. And you can see we've got the squareness, but lighter around the face. And then in the back, getting back into much more layering. So you can see here, this is all layered through. Um, graduated, graduated into a layer. So while this is square, I just wanted to show you this compared to, let me just go back to my slide here, uh, compared to this. Totally, totally different silhouette, right? Totally different silhouette. So what this is, is all about the, so goodbye darling, this is all about round, 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 round. So Come back again. You see this corner that's here? And this haircut is completely gone. So it's it's coming this way, which is really lovely because it lengthens the jawline, opens up the cheekbone, and it's really a very, very nice effect versus closing down the face and doing this kind of effect, which we've been doing for quite some time. So this shape and this silhouette, I, I find very fresh and new and exciting. So I'm gonna be showing you a haircut sort of along these lines tonight, which is gonna be interesting. So hi, my friends, so good to have you here in the house, Carmen. And then there's KK Newman and Kevin and Jean, Barbara. Barbara, I hope you're well. Will, I hope you're well, Lisa, good to have you here. Olivia, oh, in Montreal, lovely, love Montreal, fabulous. Uh, so also talking about color, um, there is obviously still this natural movement going on. The other thing that I think to be aware of is that as we get more into curl, it may be more about um, semi-permanent, demi-permanent colors and doing bands of color through the hair. That is just really about shine because it's gonna be about the curl and the texture. So be prepared for this. But the flip side of it is obviously looking at some amazing, amazing blondes and uh, looking at what you can do with extreme blondes. And again, in the finishing and the styling, walking away from the traditional beach curl and starting to do something a little bit different. So 
let's look at my little mannequin that I'm going to bring out. This is her before. And, you know, I was in the airport. I just came back from Miami. I was in the airport and I was looking at the hair walking through a, a big international airport and I saw a lot of that image. A lot. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. And, you know, when it's a cool texture on the right person, it can look fierce, right? But when it's just looking like, uh, I don't know, a bit unkept, it's a bit dodgy, don't you think? <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to, before I get into my haircut, I'm going to bring a very special guest into the, onto the screen. And she is really quite fabulous young lady. And let's just bring, let me get rid of my little, little creation here. Let me just go over here and let me bring uh, Vicky in. Good evening, Vicky. Good to see you. How are you? Sorry, I was on mute there. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So Vicky's had a full day in the salon and I said to her, would you just come and hang out tonight, ask questions, share some inspiration with our friends? So she said yes. And I said, it's a shame you shouldn't have time to go and grab a cocktail. <laughs> so um, Angel saying, Pam, I've been sitting on the idea for a style inspired by a hockey player. Who's that? I don't even know who that hockey player is. And I went to the hockey game <laughs> where his jersey was retired and unsure how to execute the pun. That might be the way to go. Yeah, okay, that's quite funny actually. Um, yeah, well, I'm gonna show you a bit of a cool look tonight and it's going to be, uh, let's show you, because I did some of it beforehand and let's bring it in. So Vicky, I'm gonna keep you unmiked and uh, you can ask questions, share some ideas, uh, and I'm just going to just put you into the background for a second so that everyone can see this close up. But anyway, this is our gorgeous Vicky. Say hi to her, everybody. <laughs> right. So. There's my before and my after. Right? Um, I wanted to, number one, do something I've never done before, which is this haircut. I've never done a haircut like this before. Number two. I went for the brown brush and I thought, no, 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 no. Don't you dare do a twist and a stretch. No, that you've done that a thousand times, not going there. And so I, I wanted to take a, an approach to this hairstyle that is uh, different to what I would usually do. And I promise you, I've never done a haircut like this before, apart from today. So you can see what I've done in here is I put some clips in there to separate the hair, but I, I will take them out now because when you have finished a hairstyle like this and you want to show off your layers, which you can see are all there, um, this hairstyle is a round shape. So um, through here, this is all round into a pointed back with a curtain fringe. So as important as this haircut is to show you, what's really important is how it's blow dried. And today, when we were doing our designer program, we were focused very much on, you know, blow drying with, I will show you, the half round brush. And this gives you such a different effect to a round brush because you're going to have, it's a totally different effect. So I did so many different moves in here to have it skinny here, to have it flip here. I used a lot of finger tension in my blow drying um, and I wanted to show off lots of layers because we've been doing a lot of one length hair um, with just some tapering around the perimeter to show off, you know, um, all the balayages, et cetera, et cetera. And beach curls clearly work a lot better on very, very long hair than they would ever work on a layer. It doesn't read the same. So I feel it's time to get back into layering. This shape is A, B. It's a V shape in here. And I actually also think that she will look quite good with a little bit of a bump in here, just a little bit, just a little tiny bit in there so that the shape is doing that and the weight being there. So let me walk you through this haircut and explain to you what I'm going to do. So uh, Vicky, what do you think so far? <laughs> I just think it's, it's crazy how we have our denims or our half round brushes in our toolkit and we always go for our round brush. 
Yes. It wasn't until I took your course <laughs> that I remembered this is such a great tool and learning different ways to use it and when to use it. Um, it's just been so amazing. Yeah, and obviously this is going to give you tremendous roundness. It's designed for that. But this you can fold. You can do so many cool things. And a lot of people have never learned how to blow dry with a comb, which I really like doing. Blow drying with a comb is absolutely an amazing method. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a section which is going to glide around the perimeter of this head. I'm going to take a very thin section and um, start working from there. Now. I, as I was playing with this earlier, because I, I really didn't know what I was going to do, and I personally wanted to do something I've never done before. Uh, I've never done a silhouette like this before. So, you know, call me old fashioned or call me like you've been in a box bib, but I haven't. So I thought, right, I'm going to show this to you, but I needed a lot of time to think, to plan this and ask myself, is it going to work? And as I said, for those of you who may miss the very beginning of this presentation, um, I was liking it, then not liking it at all. And I was thinking, oh, this is getting really, really dodgy, Viv. And then I thought, well, could I do it with scissors? And I realized this will never work with scissors. It's just not going to happen. So let's just talk about this for a moment. I have a curtain fringe. So what I did, first of all, I took a tiny triangle right here. And this is actually shorter hair here and here. So let me just kind of walk you through what I did. I took a few little pieces, I twisted them, and then I, with the razor very flat, I got, I glided along the surface. And you've got to be very careful when you do this because a lot can go super quickly. So from that triangle, then I created my second point. And if I bring the hair forwards here, there's my line there. So there's the fringe from the triangle. And now here, I'm gonna elevate a little bit and I'm going to glide through and stop. Now, as I'm doing that, I've got to measure often. So when I am cutting both sides, I am going to be looking at focal points. I'm going to measure as often as I can. And right now I wanna get my length correct. So again, I'm going to over direct here and I want this to be very, very, very undone in terms of its perimeter. Now here, I'm going to swing it right over the shoulder. So if you're not used to cutting round shapes, you're going to have this weird, sick feeling. <laughs> because as you go through here, no corner, no corner, it's all gone. The corner's not even there. So now as I come through here to this area, my goal is to end up pointing to here. And there's my focal point there. So now what I do is I comb this hair down and I look at the softness. Now I compare it to the other side. So again, I bring the hair down and around. And obviously it's much more difficult because one side is wet and one side is dry. And so I'm going to come back again. I have some wiggle room over directing it forwards. And then the next thing I'm going to do long strokes, I'm going to then blend a part of the curtain fringe through. So even if you're not going to do this hairstyle, this method right here, right now, coming through, and again, we're going to keep it nice and wet. Um, I'm going to now connect from here down. So I've got the curtain fringe effect at the middle of the eye, but here, I'm going to come through very, very soft, very soft, very soft, and through. Now I must mold the hair into place. So first of all, when I started, I started to flip. And I thought, well, maybe she's going to be a bit of a flara going on. And then I thought, well, take a look. I thought, well, yeah, that's okay. She can wear it back. But I thought, no, it actually looks cooler to actually wear it down and around, which means that when this is laying down and around, and this is flipping back, this has to have a lovely, lovely soft edge. So what I'm going to do next is take down my next section and repeat that. So Vicky, does that make sense? And do you have any questions? And are there any questions in the chat that I should be aware of? I don't, can I see the chat? <laughs> well, you, you, you can ask a question. <laughs> if you like. 
Um, yeah, I love the way you're blending the curtain fringe. I really love the softness around the face. And I like that we're not styling it back like Farrah Fawcett because that's been kind of done too, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. So Vicky, what did you think about some of the things that I feel are kind of a direction? It's not like a screaming radical change, but as I mentioned before, I think it's important to be realistic about, you know, where we are socially, mm -hmm. the climate that we're living in, and um, the mindset of, of, of people today. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, we definitely need to bring glam back and beauty back. Um, let's get over the um, pandemic stuff. <laughs> and I'm loving that color is shifting a little bit. So we're getting more into block color, textures, making a comeback, perms, as you were saying. Um, yeah, I think all of that is great. It's about time. We need a shift. Yes. Now, how do you feel your clients will respond to a different direction? Um, so as you would say, it depends on how we train our clients. Yeah. <laughs> um, so usually mine are pretty excited for what's new, what's coming, um, you know, what my new ideas for them are. Yeah, I just um, take the reins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Vicky has been going through, uh, she's done my, some of my editorial program and she's now in the designer program. She's just started the designer program. Vicky has her own business. She's um, in Toronto. And um, I, I've said many, many times, and for those of you who've been, you know, watching me over a while, you know, it's, it's our job to train our clients, right? Train them in uh, what to expect, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things I want to speak to is it doesn't matter what the trend is. Uh, it doesn't matter what the, the fashion sensibility is. If you don't know truly how to do a five-star consultation, then you're never going to get anyone to move forward. Yep. One of the most amazing things of having seen so many different fashions and all the time I've lived in London, and well, I've worked around the world, is that I've worked with some of the most amazing hairdressers in the world. And it's fascinating to watch them and listen to how they describe a hairstyle and the passion that they have for that hairstyle. So look here, guys. You can see the softness is building through. And just go back to this side here. You can see all of my layers and my pieces. It needs to come in skinny. So it's going to sit in nice and snug there. And you can see I've got that nice soft perimeter all the way around. So that's my reference. Come on, darling. I think it's crazy how many of us just put whatever is trending because that's how we're taught right like so much social media things that we see online and we want to try out but it's so so important who we put it on and the face shape and the body type and i think not many of us look at that stuff enough like i yeah. definitely yeah, but i definitely didn't yeah and i and i see it so often because you know at the end of the day while a fashion can be important and while you want your client to look um, age appropriate and fresh, um, you you always want to be sensitive to, you know, the face shape. Because, and I'm going to show you something in a moment. I, ju I just showed you a little preview of where I feel the youth can go. But I'm going to show you in a moment where I feel our more mature clients can go, which is a whole different sensibility and a, and a different need set in terms of what worked when one was, a, a, you know, 18 years old. And then, you know, when we're in our 50s or our 60s, um, you know, some of those looks just clearly don't make any sense anymore. So that's what's so very, very important. So in a moment, I will show you <clears throat> some of the the thoughts I have around that. Now look, this here, let me just come this way. This is where the curtain fringe is going to blend in. So here I'm going to elevate, elevating here, and I'm going to glide very, very, very lightly down the edge. And then flip that around, and then just see how that's living in there. So you've got the little soft pieces, which is that triangle, and now that's moving around. Now in here, 
I am picking this out because I don't want a ledge here. So a couple of things, I'm going to butter knife, which is a debulking method. So the length stays the same. It's like liposuction for the hair. <laughs> the length stays the same, but it's a whole lot skinnier. Um, you can do it with thinning scissors, clearly, but this would just give you a very invisible effect. And you have to be very, very careful as you do that. Otherwise, you can get yourself into a tricky situation. So there has to be a time when tools go down. You stop and you do nothing but look. And then you run. <laughs> And you want to measure eye level. And if it's not quite right, just move her head. <laughs> and then when you measure again, it'll be perfect, right? <laughs> so Did you do this haircut with scissors? Would this haircut work with scissors? Yes. I don't think so. Not nowhere near as nicely. Because it would be too chunky. Right. Um, and you want this to kind of kick out and move. Now, could you do a combination? Yes, you could. You could do a combination. But I think that this going in with a razor is just so much more delightful. And the nice thing is you've got the precision and you've got the movement. So, for example, when I, when I choose my tool, I choose it for the right reasons. So, for example, um, if I'm going to be choosing to... Um, use the scissors. It's because I want chunkiness. I want strength. If I'm wanting something that's soft and shattered, why would I use a tool that's going to give me a strong, precise line? I want something that's softer. And that's really important. So here, as I'm coming forward, I am now elevating this quite high. It's almost as though I'm at three o'clock on the dial. Now I'm coming in with very, very long strokes here. And then when I come into this area, I start to bring it down. So I'm coming around and through. Again, very long strokes. And this coming all the way from my center back. And then connecting this through. So one of the things that I was thinking about with this hairstyle is, you know, should I let it dry in a raw way? And I thought, no, no, I want this to be glamorous and shiny and polished and and have finish to it. So that was the reason I decided, no, no, let's do a super blow dry. So in here now, I'm just gonna wet this down. I'm gonna now go into my layers. So you saw me over directed all forwards, and now we're going to go into our layers. So one of the things that Vicky, I've been hearing from hairdressers, <clears throat> and, they, and this is quite fascinating. They'll say, Viv, I wanna grow my business. And I go, great, so tell me more. And they will say, well, maybe I want to put up my prices or I want to work on razor cutting or, or you know, whatever it is that, that is a burning desire. And sometimes I have people say, Vicky, well, I, I want to grow my business, but I don't know what to do. So what I say, and maybe this will be helpful for all of you watching tonight. When you say you want to grow your business, ask yourself first, what am I prepared to do to grow within myself? What's my growth plan? Because every action you take, if you were to write a list, and on one side of the list have everything that's going to take me towards my goal. So for example, well, give me, uh, give me a goal uh, that you have, um, Vicky, any kind of goal that you have to also build my business um my goal is to do a thousand dollars a day four days a week okay right so then on a piece of paper you would you would list your activities for the day mm -hmm. and you would list the the activities that take you towards the goal and you would also list on the other column the activities that take you away from your goal because every, every action has a consequence, every action. Every, every minute that we spend is a minute we will never get back. Money will come and go, but every action you take, there's a consequence. So if you guys were to, please write this down. 
not unless you're driving, of course, but please write this down. Every action I take counts. And it's either taking me to my goal or it's taking me away from my goal. Now, the next thing is, if we have that, the next thing is, how are we going to measure that? So obviously, Vicky's talking about financials, so numbers don't lie. Um, and if you don't like the number, the, the, the thing that one should do is change the behavior in order to change the number. And that's a very important aha moment. Um, so when you are looking at any growth plan, so for example, in the designer program that Vicky's going through right now, um, after each lesson, um, we, we meet once a week and it's amazing. We go over a technique, we photograph our work, my, myself included, put the work in the forum, give people the feedback on what they've done. And then the following week, we go into their next discipline. Everything is measured. Every single action is measured. So you can see whether the action is taking you to your goal or away from your goal. So whatever it is in your world, you've got to be able to measure the result. So for example, I'm coming from here and I have, first of all, I built an outline shape. So that's the first phase of what I did. Now I'm removing the weight through here and it's going lighter to longer. And as I'm coming through here, I'm keeping the top area longer and I'm coming around and I'm layering right the way into my base, right the way around into the actual hairline here. So that's what I'm going to be doing all the way through there. So now put my tools down again and let's measure before I get myself into serious trouble here. And I wanna just make sure that my lengths are the same as I'm coming through. And I'm going to continue that through to the center of the head. So does, is that helpful, um, Vanessa, in what I'm saying? In Vicky, excuse me. Is that helpful, Vicky, in what I'm saying in terms of how you measure and, and your, your activities taking you towards or away from your goal? Absolutely. I think when I first came to you, I was pretty done after the pandemic. Um, I had fallen out of love with my career. I knew I needed to change, something needed to change, or I was leaving. Wow. And wow. I had already, I, I have been following you my whole life. I've always admired you and your work. So I made the decision and promised myself to join and to get some inspiration and to work on my technical skills, my creative skills, and my confidence levels. I think. A lot of us undercharge because we don't know our value and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you've definitely really helped me with that and i feel like now that i'm really elevating my game i can raise my prices and have confidence behind it because i deserve it because i'm doing something different than most stylists in my town are doing mm, wow so what has your journey been like to talk, tell everybody about like um how you were able to make the shifts what what was the biggest aha moment for you um i think we just get so stuck in our ways and i mean i've always been a lifelong learner i love learning i've always trained i always take classes every time i get bored and uninspired it means i need a class um but we get stuck in our ways it's just like driving right we pick up bad habits um I think you just need to really be open to it and to allow yourself room to grow free of judgment, <laughs> which Viv can tell you all I'm pretty hard on myself. Um, I think a lot of us stylists are, so it's not a bad thing. It's just we need to be a little bit more open to learning and not be so hard on ourselves because through our mistakes is where the most growth comes from, right? Yes, absolutely. Are you passionate about hair and ready to take your styling career to the next level? If so, don't skip this video. Instead, 
click the link to find out how you can join thousands of hairdressers who've improved their skills, gained confidence, and increased their earnings by as much as 60 to 70% in just a few short months. Amazing, right? What are you waiting for? Click the link and I will see you on the inside. So Angel is asking a question. When I'm out in public, it seems like few people take pride in their appearance. Dress is la lazy and hair is unkept. How can we inspire people to care about their appearance? I'm going to answer that <laughs> while Viv is figuring that out. But I think as hairstylists, we are their trendsetters. So we need to set the example. If we look and care about our appearance, and we're showing what's trendy, um, I think that will inspire others for change. So we definitely do need to bring beauty back to the beauty industry. I think we've all been a little bit loungy and cozy since the pandemic, but yes, let's bring glam back. So I make sure that I look glamorous every day I go into the salon, um, regardless of who is sitting in my chair, I want to look expensive so that I attract expensive and so that I inspire expensive. I hope that answers your question. Welcome back, Vivian. <laughs> I'm back. Yay. <laughs> so I answered a couple of questions for you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. So um, I, I just want to show you the blow drying because I think the blow drying for this is very special. Can you hear me over the noise of this blow dryer? Yes. You can? Um, yes. I'll just turn the volume down on it a bit. So um, this is my folding technique. And you can see I'm folding it through. And I I don't have to, I, I don't really want to wet it down because I want to try and do this as fast as possible. But let's see if I can do it. So I will be, number one, holding the hair through my fingers and getting that closed down as much as I can. And in here, closing down as well. So again, holding through my fingers because I don't want it to be round. I don't want to you know, have too much of a, a bubble through there. So that's a very important part of this. Um, and I want to turn this under and have this come around. So here we do our fold. Folding around and folding around so that we have that soften onto the face. And I'm gonna take a Low dry on the floor. <laughs> Do you wonder where your clips go and then you realize that most of the clips are on the client? What <laughs> <laughs> guys? Is, it, is there anything in the questions that I should be answering right now? <laughs> yeah. Um, Tina Briscoe. Hi, Tina. Is asking, how much time do you spend in consulting? Oh, when I do, that's a great question. So generally when I'm doing a consultation, it's about five minutes because I have my clients fill out a form. So I know everything about their likes, their dislikes, et cetera, et cetera. And the awkward questions, and there are always an, there's always an awkward question to ask. So the awkward questions are, are asked in advance. And, you know, Sometimes I can look at somebody and just go, oh, yeah, I just know that I know. And then sometimes it's a puzzle because what I'd like to do, their hair won't let me do. Um, there's restrictions. And it's not always the personality or the, the client itself. It's more, um, it's more that the hair won't do it. So uh, sometimes, you know, the inspiration doesn't come as quickly as you'd like it to. So that, that can be a challenge. But if the consultation is longer, then, um, then certainly 10 minutes, you've got a problem. Because 
you haven't come up with an answer and you should have by that point in time. So I think that that's very important. Vicky, how long are you now taking? And could you share with everybody your journey through the consultation? Because I think that's how you've been able to increase your business. Am I right? Absolutely. It has increased my business by at least 40% in the last year. Um, yeah, so Vivian has a questionnaire. It's just kind of like when you go to your doctor, you fill out a medical history form before you see your doctor. It's kind of the same thing. It asks all the awkward questions we don't want to ask in person, um, like, you know, budget, maybe what's their budget? How important is budget to them? Um, where they sit in the fashion wheel? Um, how much time they spend on their hair a day? What their maintenance plan is? they're in the salon to be able to keep it up uh, you know if they're an introvert or an extrovert so like do they want their look to whisper or do they want it to scream um all of those things are super important and they're all asked in that form so like vivian said it kind of takes all the guesswork out for you so once i get their form filled out i usually just sit with them and it takes me about 10 15 minutes to just go through give them some ideas show them some pictures Vogue around their face, just so that they can see what I'm thinking on their face. So right, right now you're going through the um, blow dry uh, phase of the designer program. Um, what have been your biggest learn in in doing going through that? Just really remembering um, the other tools and learning how to do more undone, unpolished blow dries, because I was very big about, you know, big, bouncy, the bigger the hair, the closer to God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is, you taught me a lot about depth, um, which I think is very important, especially in our mature clients looking for a little bit of lift. Um, and yeah, just different ways to use our tools just to make it fun again and to change it up. So we're not doing the same thing on every single person who sits in our chair. Yes. Yes. So what's your impression of this lovely photograph that I have here? <laughs> um, um, I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> what no. are you saying? <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful head of hair, but it definitely needs some help. Yes. Do you think that that's a young person wearing that or a mature person? No, that's definitely a mature person. Do you think that they look they look um, expensive and groomed or they need help? They definitely need a little bit of help. I think they spend too much time by the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now then, my other question is how much of this do you see? out and about a lot yes a lot do you think that these ladies think that they're at their best um no and i think that maybe nobody has showed them so there's a lack of care and maybe a lack of confidence yes yeah i would have to agree so mm -hmm. that Thing is that when we're looking here and we're looking at um, hairstyles that you know have the movement, have the layer. So what I'm suggesting tonight is let's get back into layering hair more, and let's start looking at how we can take even our mature clients and give them something that's fresher. So what I know about our more mature clients is that they need softness. And not everyone can wear their hair severe and down around their face. And so that's a very important part of the consultation and the design aspect as we're going through. So um, it's all about the beauty, right? So I'm gonna give you this as an example. This lovely lady. If you were given that 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 photograph, Vicky, would you be worried that the client's more in love with the face than the hairstyle? Depending on her hair, yes, it is. I actually have this photo saved. It's a great photo. <laughs> it is a great photo. Yeah, great blow dry. 
so the, the thing is, she's a beautiful woman, correct? Yep, absolutely. And it'd be very easy for somebody who has not been photoshopped, amazing makeup, to be able to look at this and go, wow, that's really amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And um, end up feeling maybe a little disappointed. Because right. how do you even match that, right? How do you even do that? that? That's the big thing. So, you know, I'm going to come back to that in a moment. I just want to come back here to the full screen for a moment. And let's just come in here full so that you can see. So that was a very fast blow dry. Um, but what I wanted to show you is, is how this has that nice sort of softness all the way around. Now, I would come in with my thinning scissors just to skinny it down a little bit more if I feel I need to, which really I don't need to. But let me just see. No, I really don't need to. But let me just show you. I'll show you more on this side. If I want to come in with my thinning scissors, I can come in and I can rotate around and rotate around and look at that softness. I can also, with my thinning scissors, carve in and carve in and carve in. And then you can see we've got this lovely kind of rippled effect through here. So the, 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 the flip and the around, I think, are very, very important. And it, the same thing here. I can carve through and carve through just to create that lovely, soft effect. And I, I think this is just a really lovely kind of look. So I, I hope you like this. Um, it's sort of, as I said, working on a round premise and then just having all this nice softness and the really great layers. I mean, I think the layers look really, really very pretty in through here and having that round effect. And to finish this, I would probably just come in as I did before and flip it in a few places. And I would even be tempted to go in and use my diffuser. But sometimes I'll just do a, a mist of water. Sometimes I will. And just go in and dry diffuse. Not so high. <laughs> but just come in, if I put product into it. and start to create even more movement within the hairstyle just by coming in and using the diffuser. Love it. Cool, huh? Yeah. So, so that's my little girl. And um, I apologize for the... So anyway, you can see really cool texture in there, right? Really yeah. cool texture. So anyway, let's just talk about, just to, to finish tonight, let's just talk about, we've spoken about trends that are, um, we've spoken about trends that are for the youth, but now let's shift over into something a little bit more on the mature side. So for example, client comes in, shows you this photograph, I see gorgeous hair clearly. I see, you know, a beautiful face, beautifully made up, beautifully lit. And my concern would be, would the client be a little disappointed because I could do this look, but she's not going to look like this lady. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> uh, and when I do this, I go, wow, look, I've got a nice little illustration here, which is exactly the same silhouette as this lovely lady. So now I've removed the face. And by removing the face, I'm going to say, right, now then, does this silhouette balance with your face shape? So if I have somebody that has a, um, a very long face, giving them the volume, closing down the forehead is actually shortening that. Because my goal was, is always to create oval. And I think that's really important. So let's now take a look at this this. So many people with long hair, right? So many people out there wearing long, long, long hair that probably shouldn't. And the conversation should be about fashion. It should be about lifestyle. 
it should be about you know what is age appropriate but also about the bone structure um which is really important and trish is saying can thinning scissors how how oh how how spaced out are my thinning scissors yes you must just see your thinning thinning scissors hold on we'll come out we'll come out there and just show you those are my thinning scissors and my razor that's the blade it's an open blade so that's my razor and my thinning scissors for debulking so uh, hopefully that answers that question so anyway let's take a look at these ladies so obviously a transformation that works to really balance with the face and just make that client look young and fresh right the next thing we can look at is a situation like this lovely lady here and I asked her to come back in this afternoon because I cut her hair uh, earlier in the week. And I'm just gonna show you a little tiny video of today's um, look. Oh, I think it's beautiful. It's easy to take care of. I can just wash and wear. I says it's delightful. So you can see quite quite a big transformation and um, wow, beautiful hair before clearly. Uh, but just even more beautiful t t today, you know, when I see just the, the facial framing and so on. So what I'm trying to do more with my more mature ladies is give them lots and lots and lots of layers, lots of texture, lots of softness, lots and lots of softness. I, I think that's very, very important. Uh, this particular lady, when she again had her hair long, my concern was not the arrow going down which closes and can drag the face, even though uh, Patricia's got beautiful bone structure, it's more about the lifting and taking her somewhere else. Because at the end of the day, as we age, everything moves down, sadly. And we want to get to that place where we can lift up. So even a haircut like this looks amazing on a younger person, this on a mature person crosses over very, very well because of the lifting component. And I think that's very, very important. So tonight, what we've spoken about is like the, the message of, I wanna grow my business, but I'm challenging tonight to say, okay, what is your, your personal and professional growth plan? And how do you measure your success? And I think that's the most important thing. How do you measure your success? And it's having a plan. And what worries me very often is when people put their plan off and they think, oh, well, you know, I could do that in the future. But you, I, as I mentioned earlier, you've always got to be asking yourself, does your plan take you towards your goal? Are you holding yourself accountable? Do you need somebody to support you? Because you'll get there a whole lot quicker with the right support versus not really measuring your progress. So tonight, what I'd like for you to do is, is write, a, write number, first of all, your goal, right? The next thing is write your daily activities that are taking you towards the goal. And then write the activities that are actually taking you away from the goal. And when you look at the things that are taking you away from the goal, what can you start to delete? Uh, when I'm working with people on developing new habits, one of the reasons that one of our programs is a year long, I only want a 1% change every week. So for example, if, no one, if, if the stylist has never used this brush before, we've got to work on a way like with this here of you know, how do you get that softness and how do you get that flip and how do you get that around and how do you get all that nice movement in there with a tool like this, because obviously a round brush is gonna make it too bubbled, right? So those baby shifts, measuring the client's face, doing the, the face shape analysis, going through the consultation, you have to take them in baby, baby steps so that you take an idea and you apply it. You take another idea and apply it. 
And by taking those baby, baby steps, they stick. How many of you have gone to an amazing workshop and you've really enjoyed yourself, had an amazing time, and then you get home and you try a couple of things, one of them maybe goes a little wrong or not quite the way you thought or it throws your day behind and then you think, oh, well, I'll do it another day and then you find yourself going right back to the habits you had before and you weren't able to break the pattern. What I've learned is that when you do slow changes, the habits are traded we get rid of one habit that doesn't serve and we upgrade to a new habit. And the only way to do it is to go slow. And I know that's not exciting, but the transformation is happening in such an extraordinary way that it actually impacts somebody in a very profound way. And as Vicky said, she's been able to really increase her business in a remarkable way and it's been manageable. So I want to tell you about some fun things we have lined up if you want to come and play. I'm going to be a student in this class, struggling to create the lived-in look. We're going to do our, our, a one-day color boot camp, and it's in March 24th. And the great thing is it's with Max Masano. Max and I have known each other for a long, long time. I met Max um, when I was at Matrix, and then I, he came back into my life, and he actually came to New York to do an editorial course. And he came in and he said, Viv, I've never dressed hair before. I'm useless, but I'm here to learn. I said, fantastic. And I and he was so amazing because he did exactly what I asked him to do. And the transformation was so extraordinary because he would just like, I say, put your hand there, put your hand there, twist that. And he'd go, I, oh my God, that's unbelievable. I just did it. And I just thought this guy is so cool. So we stayed in contact. His passion is color. And um, he uh, has worked for me in the past, and now he's back with me again. And I'm super excited because he's actually heading up our color, and he's launching this series. And I'm going to be a student in his class, which will be quite funny because I'm not a colorist, so this is going to be hysterical. Maybe I'll color this girl. Um, and what's great is that if you actually want to have a conversation with Max, who's the sweetest, most beautiful gentleman, you can actually book a call. And he only has a few slots each week because he's a salon owner. He works in the salon. He works for me developing our education. But he does like to take a few coaching calls during the week. So if you want to talk to Max about joining the color program or any other, other programs that we have, Sometimes the best strategy is just to have a chat with somebody and just say, well, I'm here and I want to go there or I've got so many things I want to do. I don't know where to begin or I'm a little bit stuck. What advice do you have? And, do you know, it's like taking a weight off your shoulders. It's just amazing. So I'm going to give you the information at the end of today's session, but you can actually um, book a call with him. And as I say, we only take a few calls per week. So if you want to, um, check out uh, the link in a moment. I'm super excited about this. Okay, how many of you have had a bride sit in your chair and you think, that's it? I'm going to run away with the circus. I hate hairdressing. I hate brides. I never want to do this again. I've had that happen. Vicky, has that happened to you too? Yes, she's nodding. So it's like anything in life. When you do it well, you love it and you want more. When you don't do something as well, and it's difficult and it's a challenge, you try to avoid it. So, you know, how do you measure time? What is a long amount of time? For me, a long amount of time would be standing in Manhattan, waiting for a bus to arrive, and it's piddling with rain, and I don't have an umbrella. And that five minutes feels like an hour, right? Because it's not fun. Meanwhile, I candled at dinner with my husband. <laughs> The time flies, right? So time's relative, isn't it? So when you have someone sitting in your chair and it's going so horribly wrong, it feels like eternity. Am I being theatrical? Because <laughs> that's how it feels, right? And what I do know is that when you learn the fundamentals of dressing hair and you learn the strategy for working with a bride and you learn how to do a, a great consultation with a bride and start elevating prices for your bride. It's just amazing how different that can be. So we're doing a two-day boot camp on bridal hair, and it's going to be in April, April the 14th and the 15th. 
So it's two full days from the comfort of your home, no travel required. And we're just gonna take baby steps and go through lots of really fun looks and just have a great time. So your mannequin, my mannequin, you follow along and we have a great time. So just wanted to share that with you because it's gonna be super, super fun. Uh, and then here in my studio, we do workshops. We only do a few. And this year, um, if you are interested and want to do color, Max will join you. And uh, we can do cut, styling, color, and we can be creative here in the studio. So if that's something you'd like to do, I can only take six people. It's very, very, very intimate, but we have so much fun. And um, it's just great to have a strategy before you come. So what we like to do is have a coaching call before you come here. And I look at your work and I look at your Instagram page. And usually what people say is, no, no, Viv, don't look at my Instagram page. I hate it. It's like, no, no, don't worry. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to judge. I just want to see where you are so I can help you with the next step. And people get like nervous about showing me their work. And it's like, please don't. I said, I'm here to help you. And if I don't know where you are, how do I know where to take you, right? So I always think people are, are brave and they just show up and they go, oh, that wasn't so bad. She was she was pretty easy to work with. <laughs> so um, yeah, we, we do a coaching session before you come to my studio and that way we can plan your looks. So I always like to find out what your signature looks are and what they're going to be. So those signature looks are very, very important. So we do that and it's a whole lot of fun. And then the, the final icing on the cake, which is going to happen later in the year, we're going to do a photographic workshop in New York. So if you want to take your work to that next level photographically, we meet via Zoom leading up to the event. So it's actually six weeks in total. So we do a Zoom on how you produce a photo shoot. We do a Zoom on creating the storyboards. We then do a rehearsal with our hairstyles. Then you come into Manhattan and we work for a day together. Then we do the shoot. The photographer teaches you how to use your phone correctly. It was like, oh, really? That's how it works. It's so interesting how to use your phone to get really great photographs of your clients. I think that's important. Uh, and then afterwards, we do another Zoom session where we kind of do, a, a, we pick the images. So the group that just went through, you have to go to the, the website and just check out the video. It's so cool. But the group that just went through it, um, they're entering one shot now for behind the chair. Uh, we're going to enter Team Naha. They've already been published in a magazine, which is totally fabulous, beautiful magazine. So we plan to do exactly the same with the next group of people. There's only eight we allow, and it's pretty awesome. So, you know, if you want to take your work to that next level, that's it. But I've said a lot tonight. I've spoken about color, styling, photographic, coming to my studio where you can do all and any of those things. I've had people come here that are in the film industry. I've had people come in that are all different genres of, of our industry. So it, it's just lovely to be around like-minded people and collaborate together, which I think is really cool. So if you want to find out more and you say, Viv, I just need someone to talk to me. As I mentioned, we only take a few calls per week, but you can certainly apply and you'll go to our website. And at the website, you'll be able to, you'll see book a coaching call. A, a, a call with us and you can actually do that so be brave do something different tonight do something you've never done before right just just go for it just go for it and do it and I see quite a few of our members here um, that uh, are in the program with me so you know um, they can actually vouch for you know it, it's a pretty amazing experience uh, so that's really very important so, um, yeah, so you can visit um, my website and uh, you can check that out. And um, Vicky, is there anything that you'd like to share with our friends that you feel would be an inspiration in terms of what you've learned and to encourage them? Um, just do it. Show up for yourself. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody else is going to hold your hand. You just need to, like, do it for yourself because you owe it to yourself. Yeah, and you know, we all like learning tricks, right? A quick little technique, a quick this and a quick that. But it it's it doesn't always mean that you're building your business. You've just got like a little. Sometimes they're empty calories. They're they're like it's like snacking on some goodies, right? 
Right. But the real value is in a strategy and it's a plan and it's a transformation. So, you know, I've been in the business long enough now that I don't get excited about teaching somebody how to cut a straight line. I get trans I get excited about creating a transformation for that person. Now, if they're cutting a straight line, fine. But I'm more excited about seeing somebody be transformed. And what I love is when the the professional transformation impacts the private life where the private life has more quality the relationship with your loved ones because you're the happiest people in life are those who are progressing and the, the people who are not progressing are usually standing still living in the past living backwards because if you're standing still you're not moving forward you're actually going backwards so it's just so rewarding to be moving forward and to be constantly growing and to be able to measure. And I think that if any of you are looking for a real transformation, you can do a little boot camp or you can do a full immersion. And I wanted to just salute Vicky because Vicky, you know, she's a salon owner. She's a very busy lady, um, very talented. She also educates uh, um, in, in her own world. Uh, so that's wonderful. And she shows up. She shows up for every editorial boot camp that we do. She's now in the designer program and she's going through her blow drying and I'm giving her coaching on silhouette and depth and stop and use your mirror. And it, it's changing her life. And that, that's exciting to me, really exciting. But I admire Vicky for how she shows up. She just shows up and she gives it all. And when she's been frustrated with, oh my gosh, Viv, it was didn't work. It's like, she's 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 very cool about it, aren't you, Vicky? It's like, okay, so it didn't work. You you beat yourself up for th three seconds and then you get on with it, don't you? Absolutely. That's, getting, that's getting better too, isn't it? You're beating yourself up a little less or for shorter periods of time, right? You're right. You're absolutely right. I, you know what? I think it's so important to have a coach. Like you made me fall in love with it again and all the people in my salon around me have noticed the change and the difference and it's inspiring change in them. And like, even the co even the president has a coach. It's important to show up for yourself and have somebody help you along the way. Sometimes we all need help. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, you know, Vicky, when I think about my early days in my career, um, it was, it was somewhat aloof and um, you couldn't really go and say to the big icons that I was working with, oh, I'm a little bit stuck here, could you help me? It's like, you just hope that they don't realize that you're struggling so you don't get fired. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because that was it. Like if, you, if they really realized how useless I was and I'm just covering up for it, you know, they would probably fire me. But we didn't have that open door policy. And the word mentoring wasn't even on my radar. We just showed people what to do and they did it. And they, and so it's such a beautiful difference today in our industry. You've got access to so much information. And in, in actual fact, there's information overload. The world doesn't need more information. What the world needs is wisdom. The wisdom to know how to apply what you've learned. So not only does it feed your heart, but it feeds your pocket. So I hope that you've enjoyed this evening. I hope you've enjoyed that little glance through trends for the youth, trends for the mature client, and looking at some things to start putting onto your radar. And um, let's get layering hair, guys. Let's make it soft and let's actually go with that, that feeling of glam because I think that's really our signature. And just be ready for the haircut revolution. It's on its way. Don't get left behind because there's lots and lots of ladies out there with that really long hair. Some of it is fabulous, but some of it needs to be chopped, chopped. <laughs> <laughs> Go out there and bring beauty back. <laughs> bring beauty back, yeah. Thank you so much, Vicky, for being with us this evening. You are such a beautiful young lady, and I'm so proud of everything you do. You always make me smile when you post your work, and it's always great to, to just give you the little feedback. <laughs> <laughs> guys thank you so much for being with us this evening kevin thank you evelyn carmen kim will thank you so much lisa lisa there's got a few lisas in the house thank you so much so don't forget book that call and for those of you who are members tell somebody that you love 
You know what to say. Put back all. <laughs>